Um, so let me introduce uh, Professor Premal, uh, who is the co-chair of our conference also, and he is an authority in vitreous application. So I would request uh, you to please. Uh, introduce. So, uh, so I think a couple of next uh, introduction points should be addressed to Professor Premal, right, sir? Yeah. Okay. So, Professor Premal, I have made some kind of uh, queries okay. and some uh, introduction points. And they are largely related to silicon, okay. and I am finding lot of interesting structures also. Okay. And he showed me silicon also. We will discuss about that also. So my first interaction point is, sir, why silicon is so attractive for MEMS applications? Okay, thank you very much. I think this is one of the my major area of research. Okay. I love silicon. I work in silicon. I spent more than twenty years on the silicon. If you will see the silicon, silicon is the second most abundant element on the earth crust. Okay. So that's make it easily available. Okay. Just we have to collect the sand from the beach, mm -hmm. or after the several process, chemical and heat treatment process, we mm -hmm. convert it to the mm -hmm. electronic grade silicon. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see here, mm -hmm. this is the import which we fabricate mm -hmm. just to make the silicon paper. Okay, this I got from the industry. Mm -hmm. So slicing is done, and we get this kind of paper. This is a four inch paper mm -hmm. we get, mm -hmm. and the. And electrical conductivity of the silicon can be tailored easily. We can make it anti, we can beta, we can reduce or increase that conductivity. Mm -hmm. So when the band's concept was started, mm -hmm. so this uh, semiconductor devices like diode, transistor, integrated circuits are fabricated on silicon. So silicon was the first choice of the lens. Okay. So and that's why the lens became the silicon became the popular in the fabrication of the lens. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, you said that uh, this is uh, abundant in uh, crust or something, but at the same time, what I know is like in India, maybe we don't have much uh, this thing. And also, you were mentioning that it is difficult to get uh, silicon, and you managed to get it from industry and all. So, if so abundant, it is why it is so difficult to get uh, silicon? Actually, it is not difficult to get because we don't have any manufacturing industry here. Okay. So recently, our government has taken the big initiative to start the manufacturing industry. Okay. So definitely, we will have the silicon vapor fabrication industry mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. Silicon is available everywhere, but uh, because we don't have the manufacturing industry, okay. so that's why there is no industry which produces the silicon. Okay. So extraction to finally manufacturing, mm -hmm. that is where the bottleneck is. Yeah. Okay. So, Professor, my next question was related to PVD. There is a technology which we call physical vapor deposition. And chemical vapor deposition for the deposition of material layers, which we call wafers, while fabricating MEMS devices. So, can you tell us about that also? Okay, let me flash the slide, then it will be much easier to explain. So, when we deposit the thin film, there are two kinds of methods are used okay. for the fabrication of the this silicon film. Sorry, different kind of thin film. Okay. One is the physical vapor deposition method, another is the chemical vapor deposition. So by name itself, anybody can understand. Physical means there is no reaction okay. in this case. So okay. just we have to just create the constraints of the deposited material mm -hmm. and inside the vacuum chamber, and these constraints are deposited on the substrate, and we get the thin film. In case of the chemical vapor deposition, okay. chemical means some reaction is happening. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have to put the substrate in okay. at the high temperature, and we have to pass the gases mm -hmm. and the Chemical reaction takes place on the substrate and we get the thin film. Okay. If we go further that because physical vapor deposition is there, both techniques are used simultaneously. simultaneously and both have the wide application. Okay. If we talk more about this, what is PVD? PVD means uh, there are two major techniques used evaporation right. and sputtering. Right, sir. Okay. So sputtering is uh, for physical vapor deposition. Yeah, basically. This is one of one kind of the physical mm -hmm. vapor deposition. Mm -hmm. So there must be some difference also, like physical vapor and chemical vapor. We will go for this and not this. Is there any difference or simultaneously? No, actually, it depends upon the what basically we want. Sometimes there is a restriction of the temperature. We cannot take the temperature to the high. So we cannot take the substrate to the high temperature. Mm -hmm. Then we have to go for the physical vapor deposition. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because here reaction is involved, mm -hmm. so sometimes the quality. Mm -hmm. Again, it depends upon the requirement. What basically we are going to fabricate. Sometimes we have to. Means uh, compromise on the temperature. Sometimes we have to. Okay. So, Professor, I am totally illiterate on these things. So, I will ask you a very silly question. So, you said this is uh, a silicon. Uh, we have uh, this. Uh, we have taken this silicon material from industry, and then you said we have made that kind of slice from this. Yes. So, my question is: uh, to make that slice from this, do we use this technology, sir? 
No, this is not the technology. This technology is used on the substrate. Okay. But after the means creating this silicon vapor, okay. processing is done okay. on the okay. silicon vapor. Okay. This physical vapor deposition is one of the means process okay. used in micro fabrication. Okay. So when we say vapor, this is this slice. Yes. This is called vapor. Yes. So, Professor, next uh, you have mentioned what term and it is written there also, which is called sputtering. Yeah. So, I have heard this term a lot. Yeah. So, can you please explain what is sputtering actually? Actually, if you can see in this figure, just right. we have to apply, we have the parallel plate capacitor, right. one is holding the target, right. another is holding the substrate right. on which we have to deflect right. the thin plate. Mm -hmm. Just we have to apply the bias, okay. by applies, we have to create the plasma. Okay. And with the help of the this mm -hmm. argon gas mm -hmm. or you can say the noble gas, mm -hmm. and the, once the plasma created, this material ejected okay. from the target mm -hmm. and started positing on the substrate. Okay. So you know physics, Mister, I have studied something which is called photoelectric effect. Some uh, energy comes and electrons are ejected. It, it is looking like similar to me. Plasma is coming and matter is coming. This, uh, it is not. It's very much different. In photoelectric, effect, only the electrons are playing. Yes, sir. Electron, here we are getting the target material, which is coming out from the substrate mm -hmm. and depositing on the substrate. Okay. Sputtering is very important thing sir for fabrication of MEMS devices. Yes, yes. So do we have something else also or sputtering is the No, as I told you that there are two major techniques which are used in the study mm -hmm. for the thin film reports and okay. the chemical report and the physical report. Okay. After that, there is further category of chemical mm -hmm. vapor deposition mm -hmm. like the means uh, ABCVD, okay. PECVD, LPCVD, okay. okay. And the physical vapor deposition, these are the two major types. Okay. And there is another term professor which is lithography. So that is also used for the fabrication process only. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us uh, about lithography also? Okay, let me show you again one more slide so that it will be much easier. Yeah. So lithography just we are transferring the image of the mask okay. on the vapor. Okay. Now you see the vapor from this side, right? So there is no pattern on this vapor. Mm -hmm. Right. But we want to make pattern on pattern this, on this okay. just to make the device like right. that in case of the man's cantilever diagram. Right. So we have to transfer the pattern from the photo mask. Right. Now you can see here this is the pattern, pattern on the vapor. Mm -hmm. So lithography is the technique by which we transfer the pattern from the mask mm -hmm. to the vapor. Okay. So that is the yeah, mm -hmm. and if you will see here, mm -hmm. just you see here, mm -hmm. this is a very nice example. Yeah. This is the mask pattern right. which we want to transfer on the paper. This right. is my paper, paper which is oxidized. Mm -hmm. So now I have transferred this paper. So there are two kinds of photoresist used positive mm -hmm. and negative. Mm -hmm. So we get opposite kind of pattern. In this case, we are getting this kind. Right. So here we are getting this so mm -hmm. Wonderful. Professor, there is another term which I have uh, written and uh, which uh, I want you to uh, explain us, that is etching. Oh. So, what do we mean by this word etching? And uh, it is used uh, again in fabrication of MEMS devices. So, what is this and uh, why is this etching required? Actually, etching is another, another one more important uh, processing step in micro fabrication. Mm -hmm. Let me show here. Okay. Better explanation. Right. Etching means just we are removing something from the substrate. Right. If suppose I want to make the groups of cavity, mm -hmm. then I have to remove the materials. Right. So in this case, then the etching method we remove the material selectively right. to make the structure of the requirement. For right. example, we want to make the cantilever. Right. So like the cantilever, we mm -hmm. have to remove the underneath material right. to make it hanging. Right. So that is called the etching. Mm -hmm. And again in the etching, if we see. There are two kinds of etching, dry etching or wet etching. Mm -hmm. Dry means we are not using any kind of liquid, right? Wet liquid. Mm -hmm. And wet etching, we are using some kind of the chemical. For example, the silicone etching, okay. uh, anisotropic is most widely used to okay. fabricate the lamps. Okay. In that case, KOF, potassium mm -hmm. hydroxide, and tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide, PNH, mm -hmm. are most widely used. Okay. And I, I think I would like to show one more yes. thing that what industry is using currently. Mm -hmm. So this is the torque wrench vapor mm -hmm. you will see here. And this you will, you will really get in the laboratory because most of the laboratory use 4 inch vapor. Okay. This is the 12 inch vapor mm -hmm. on which industry fabricate the mm -hmm. devices. So that means diameter looks like 1 feet sir, 12 inch? Yeah, 12 inch, yes. Mm -hmm. So it is very large size. Ha, because the reason for the large size, we can get more number of devices. If we have the more number of devices in one go, mm -hmm. then definitely the device cost will be reduced. Mm -hmm. Just very simple example, if you 
see the laptop cost 20 years back, right sir? So configuration was very low, mm -hmm. the cost was very high. Right. Even now, mm -hmm. you will get much better configuration, but right. cost is less than right. less. This is one of the reasons because of the technology we are fabricating the devices on larger size. Mm -hmm. So this we have seen in electronic devices, so like cost reduces drastically with pass of time. Yeah. So we are trying to link that thing with yeah, this. Yeah, this is the one of the major reason we are able to fabricate the device on bigger size of mm -hmm. For but uh, what about the uh, manufacturing cost of larger size size vehicles? Like small size and larger size, but as the size increases, the manufacturing cost also tends to increase. Actually you can say man actually technology is the same, yes. but we have to just one time investment on the larger size. Okay. Which can use okay. for the larger size okay. you know, paper. Okay. So it's one time investment. Mm. Cost will not be added much because only this this uh, material is adding. Mm. But uh, mm. advantages are more to reduce the cost of the fabricated paper. Further processes are yeah. So professor, getting uh, this uh, large size, we need to have billet also of large size. Yeah, the import mm. large size. Import has to be large size. Mm. And uh, uh, now another silly question sir, before we request you to explain these structures also and that is uh, we discussed a couple of uh, terms like uh, sputtering, lithography, etching. So another silly question, in one or two sentences the difference between all these things or what these terms? Actually if you will see that uh, because you are not in this area, so right. just I am explaining, there is a term which we call microfabrication. Right. In microfabrication there are a number of processes, mm. few of them we have discuss just now right. when you ask the question right, like the lithography, right, etching, mm -hmm. thin film deposition, mm -hmm. diffusion, mm -hmm. ion implantation. Mm -hmm. These are the part of microfabrication. Okay. Mm -hmm. So every process have their yes. own role in the microfabrication. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we can see some uh, other structures are lying there. So yeah, yeah. Structures yes. I think this is the atomic structure of the silicon. Mm -hmm. If suppose we enlarge the, the atoms mm -hmm. inside the substance, like for example, this is the same mm -hmm. If we take the very narrow, we have to keep on mm -hmm. increasing the size. Then the structure of silicon will look like this. Okay. This is the silicon atom right. and covalently bonded mm -hmm. with the neighboring atoms. Mm -hmm. And if you will see the unit cell, mm -hmm. unit cell look like this. Mm -hmm. So we have a structure of right. mm -hmm. And these, if you will see these balls, mm -hmm. Each ball is representing one circle. Uh, professor, you have explained many things and uh, also explained that how we have bought it from industries. I am asking one question a little out of the way. And that is, uh, industries look forward to academician and researchers like you. You said you have spent 20 years in this research. So can you sir, throw some light uh, on uh, where industry can seek help of people like you? I mean, where they can approach you and in which domain they can approach you for their requirements? Actually, if, you were, if I confine my area, yes. I work on silicon micro machine. Right, sir. When I was working in the Japan, so professor was having the project from the different company like the Panasonic. So, because company requirements are large, different. because different food. So, that's why they have to find the expert. Right, like the, just now the professor was so pointed. Mm -hmm. So, he is having the expert in the design mm -hmm. and, uh, and so okay. modeling. Mm -hmm. So, when they have to before the fabrication, they have to design the device mm -hmm. and they have to do the modeling. And they go to the uh, academician or researcher mm -hmm. who is having the expertise in that area. Okay. So, if suppose they have to resolve some issue related to the micro machine, mm -hmm. so they will find the person who is working in the micro machine. Right. So, I am working on the micro machine, so I can help them if suppose they are stuck on some problem related to micro machines. Mm -hmm. So we can work with the industry to resolve that issue. Okay, wonderful. And uh, this IIT Hyderabad sir is a relatively new IIT. But uh, I uh, am penetrating this today or I, we know that uh, this is fast coming up IITs in terms of creation of the research facilities. I want to ask you sir related to your domain of research, what are the research facilities related to your area of research which are present in IIT Hyderabad? Actually, related to my area, I have the excellent facility. Uh, just now we discussed that lithography you were asking that we have the mask liner okay. by which we transfer the pattern from the photo mask to the vapor okay. and etching so we have the dry etching system okay. where we have to use only the gases for the etching okay. and we have the wet etching system where we have to use the wet chemicals okay. and then the position we are using the RF spotry which is the, one of the category of the physical vapor deposition 
and other system like when we have to analyze the structure for example by naked eye you cannot see what is inside there so then we have to take the bigger size picture so we have very good optical microscope as well as the scanning electron microscope to see the close up view of the structure if you if you uh, directly characterize those structures so polytech laser vibrometer okay uh, that uh, we are also going to talk we are going to see that so that also plays an important so that what it does it it will ensure okay. that whether your structure has etched properly or not okay like a character you want and it can vibrate and you can capture the modes and things okay wonderful so uh, i think sir that brings us to an end of a wonderful session with sir and we would like to even visit sir facilities which you mentioned we will go to those facilities we will see that also and i am very sure sir whatever information you have provided that will be of immense help to all the students researchers and industry people also thanks a lot sir thank you very much